Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome back to my channel. My today's video is all about birthday cards. Did you know that Spellbinders is celebrating their 20th anniversary this year? And to celebrate, they released a special collection called Birthday Celebrations. This collection features products from both Spellbinders in-house designers, as well as several Spellbinders influencers, Dina Smith and Vicky P. And I have links to these girls' YouTube channels in the video description below. Be sure to check them out. Both are very talented and have incredibly fun and inspiring videos. This collection is simply perfect for any type of birthday project, be it a feminine birthday, a masculine birthday, a kid's birthday, you name it. There's something for everyone. You guys know me, I never have enough birthday cards on hand, so I was only too happy to get my hands on this line and create several birthday cards for my stash. That being said, I have some fun ideas in this video, and you can take these ideas and apply them to the products you might already have in your stash. Don't feel like you have to go ahead and purchase this collection. I'm just here to share inspiration. This collection is huge. There are 22 different products, dies, glibber plates, embossing folders, stencils. There's even an embellishment bundle with pattern paper and stickers. I don't have every single product and I didn't use every single product from this line, but I do have a few favorites and those are the products that I'll showcase in this video. No birthday is ever celebrated without a cake and of course there's an amazing cake die in this collection called Topsy Turvy Cake by Vicky P. It is a five layer cake and if you use all of the layers, you can make it work for a five by seven card or a slimline card. It is quite big. You can also use fewer layers and make the cake fit in a two card. This is what I love the most about this die set is how versatile it is. It works easily for various size projects. Each layer has an insert and that adds interest if you cut it from contrasting color paper or texture if you cut it from the same color cardstock. Here I cut both background and insert layers from the same color paper to add texture, but if you use different colors of cardstock, you'll be able to see the insert much more prominently on the cake. You can go totally wild and use very different colors of paper or go very subtle and just use a shade darker or a shade lighter paper. The yellow example cake is totally different from this purple one because I used yellow and white cardstock for the cake layers. You can see the insert detail a lot better. Then the yellow cake uses just the three top layers, making it a small petite cake for an A2 card. It is up to you which layers to use. You can use the bottom three layers or the top two layers or the top three or skip the first layer and use a second, third, or fourth, totally up to you. And that's the beauty of this die set. There are so many different ways to use it. Now you can make this cake suitable for a kid's birthday. The design does lend itself to that, but you can also embellish it with flowers and turn it into a feminine cake. A quick tip for you, when decorating the inserts with the dots and the stars, keep the negative pieces. You can use those as little background embellishments for your cards or as confetti for shakers. So here I have my four tier cake. It looks big enough for an A2 card and I'm not going to add the fifth tier to this one. There are several embellishments to decorate the cake. There's the frosting and you can have it dripping down from the top of each tier. I love that look. And there's also the dotted detail piece. I don't really know what the proper name of this element is. Let me know in the comments below if you do. I cut it from white cardstock for this card and for most of the other cakes that I made when making these cards. I also die cut the dripping frosting for this cake and I used new Spellbinders glitter fun foam. This is in color purple. And then I layered it under a purple cardstock piece. This way, I have just a little bit of that glitter fun foam show, and it also adds dimension to the cake, making the frosting pop off the background. Speaking of the background, to create the background for the cake, I used a panel of purple cardstock and added a tone-on-tone -tone foiling with the help of lavender foil. Now, this is a new foil color from Spellbinders, new in my stash, and it looks very pretty. It is not as shiny as the other foils. It has 
a subtle sheen to it. It is very similar to matte gold or matte silver in terms of shine. It isn't as flashy as the other foils. And I also use the hand-drawn loops glimmer plate to foil a background. This plate is just a strip, so it only foils a portion of the background. But you can repeat foil it to cover the entire card front. I actually like how it adds just a partial design and doesn't cover the entire card. In the meantime, I cut the barcode off the packaging of my foil roll and adhered it on the inside of the roll. I do this every time I get a new roll of foil. This helps me identify the foil color as I work. And it's very simple, but very useful trick. I used my Glimmer Hot Foil system and I foiled the background. I'm not going to show you how I did that as there are many videos on introduction to hot foil stamping. This design foiled perfectly on colored cardstock. And I think the key to success here is the design is pretty thin, pretty small. I also foiled a sentiment, happy birthday, and a sub-sentiment, have a magical day. Both of these come from the same birthday celebrations collection from the birthday unboxing glimmer set. I always want to add flowers to my projects, so naturally I added several flowers to the cake. The flowers make it a, bit of, a little bit more of a wedding cake rather than a birthday cake, but I just love the flowers add-on here. I think it looks very beautiful like this. I used a combination of the mini blooms and sprigs dyes. Those are the last year florals from Spellbinders and Be Bold Blooms. Those are this year florals from Spellbinders. And I used just the smaller blooms from both sets to decorate the cake. And I love the result. I used new Spellbinders sequins, the color essential sequins in purple to create flower centers for my flowers. I didn't want to use gems. I wanted to try something different. The sequins were released in May and they come in several colors. I think there are five different colors and there are three sizes of sequins in each pack. And of course, they coordinate in color with the other Spellbinders Color Essentials products. I have little sample bags of sequins and just the bisque sequins in the original packaging so you can see how many sequins you get in one pack and you get quite a lot. I have made four cards using the cake die, all completely different. Here's one where I foiled parts of the sentiment onto the background. This is Simon Says Stamp, Midnight Green cardstock. And by the way, most of the cardstock I'm using today is from Spellbinders and Simon Says Stamp. If I remember which color it is exactly, I try to say so, but oftentimes I don't, and I'm sorry about that. The little foiled happy comes from an older glimmer plate set from Spellbinders. I was just looking for a separate happy word to be able to foil a mixed sentiment. The word birthday comes from a new die set called Stylized Happy Birthday. It is one of my favorite dies in this release. There's a word die, happy birthday, and a shadow die, happy birthday. I just got the word die here, and to help me position it correctly, I made a mask from vellum. I simply die cut the same word out of vellum and used just the negative. I taped the vellum mask over my background. Vellum is semi see through, and that allowed me to see the foiling underneath and pick the best placement for this word. Next, I was able to adhere each letter one by one, making sure the spacing and the placement was just right. I made my letters dimensional by adhering orange cardstock letters onto black fun foam letters. I chose black fun foam for this as the background is dark green and the black blended well with it. The fun foam I'm using is the Spellbinders foam and it is called the pop-up die cutting sheets. It comes in a mixed pack of white and black and you get more white. I think you get like um, seven white sheets and three black sheets. So that's a very clever mixed pack. I waited for the glue to dry, and then I tore the vellum piece off, leaving the letters adhered onto the background. I added my cake on top, and that finished my card. So here's another card I made with a cake die and the same stylized happy birthday set. Here I used a different trick to adhere the letters straight onto the card. I used self-adhesive sheets and added a sheet to the back of the glitter fun foam from Spellbinders before die cutting it. Now, there are many different brands of self-adhesive sheets on the market. There's a Stick It. I have used it in the past. 
and there are these adhesive sheets from Scrapbook Adhesives. And I'm sure there are other brands with sticky sheets like these, but these are the two brands that I've used and that I like. So I adhered a sheet to the back of the glitter fun foam. I die cut it using the birthday die, and then I removed the backing sheet just from the letters, leaving the background, the backing sheet on all of the negative space. This allowed me to place that die cut onto my background and press down on the letters to stick them all at once onto the card. Now, it was still a little bit tricky to get all of the negative fun foam out of there, but still, it was easier than trying to adhere the letters one at a time. And this gave me perfect placement. Using a pokey tool, such as the tool-in-one, helped a lot as well. I added the word happy in the exact same way. By the way, these were die cuts from the Glitter Peach Fun Foam from Spellbinders. And their Fun Foam comes in packs of 10 sheets, two colors, so five sheets of each color. And there are currently four different packs with eight different colors in total. So this finished my third cake card. I skipped adding the frosting here, but I couldn't resist adding the flowers once again. Now my next cake skipped using the inserts and just used the tears alone. I also used a different color combination for this card, light blue, gray, lots of orange, and various shades of green. I also added foiling to the background. I foiled the same hand-drawn loops glimmer plate, and this time I used opal foil for a tone-on-tone -tone look, and also matte silver to foil the main sentiment. The sub-sentiment was foiled in opal as well. Opal foil, in case you haven't seen it or haven't used it before, it is almost a clear foil, and I like to think of this foil as one that would give me a watermark type look. If you are into stamping, you know that there is a watermark ink that gives you a watermark look. This opal foil is sort of similar to that, not 100% exactly like the watermark ink, but very similar. Now, the opal foil is a little bit tricky to work with because if you aren't careful, you're not going to know which is the correct side of this foil, but it does get very pretty and subtle results and is absolutely worth it. My next favorite is the surprise box die set and the sentiment stamp set that goes with it called birthday unboxing sentiments. Here I die cut the box from craft paper and pattern paper as I wanted to create one of these boxes that are plain brown on the outside but have a pretty design on the inside once you open it. We've all seen boxes like that, right? Now, do you see the bottom stamps, the bottom stamp images here? They are designed to go on either side of the box front. The images are skewed intentionally, just like the box side, and they fit perfectly on either the left or the right side of the front of the box. Here is one box example I made. It was done in the same manner, just plain brown on the outside with a pretty pattern on the inside. The box has flaps and is dimensional. Now there's no bottom to the box, so things will fall out if you put something inside and do not glue it down. Here is another box, also with a patterned paper on the inside, and one more. This one is a little bit more fancy. The front is made from hot pink cardstock, and the stamping is done with watermarking for a more soft look. Here is another example. This one is reverse. I have pretty patterned paper on the outside and solid colored cardstock on the inside of the box. Here is another example done in different colors, but also using patterned paper. By the way, all of these patterned papers are from the Spellbinders paper pad called Cheerful Occasions, also a part of this collection. And the paper pad it can also be found in the embellishments bundle. Okay, now let's talk about the things that you can put inside the box. The box itself is pretty big, so you can fit a lot of objects inside. Here I put the balloon animal inside the box. It fits nicely. By the way, the balloon dog or the balloon animal was made using a die that is also a part of this release. And you can put regular balloons inside the box. I have a card showing that. And you can also put flowers inside the box. Here I have an example of that as well. And the sky is the limit. You can put anything else inside the box that you can think of. Now, how do you assemble the box? 
This piece makes the front of the box. If you want to have a brown box, cut this piece from craft cardstock or brown cardstock. Next, this piece makes the back of the box or the inside of the box, what you see when the box is assembled. If you want to have a pattern on the inside of your box, cut this from patterned paper. And finally, these two pieces cut the front flaps. Again, if you want pattern on the inside of the box, cut these from patterned paper. If you're making a brown box or a solid colored cardstock box, cut these from uh, colored cardstock or craft cardstock. If you want to add stamping to the front of your box, you need to do that before assembling it. I just pop the die kit inside my MISTI, stamp the images in either black ink or watermark ink, depending on the look that I want. Next, fold along the perforated lines. Add glue to the tabs of the flaps, like so, and adhere them to the front piece from the back. And that creates our front flaps. Fold the flaps on the box back and add glue to the box front tabs. Add the back piece and adhere it. You can also use tape. I prefer to use glue as it gives me a more secure hold. And our box is ready. Now these boxes are addictive and super fun to make, especially if you mix and match patterned paper and colored cardstock. I got carried away and I think I made close to 10 boxes. Now let's put one of these boxes onto a card. Here I die cut balloons from colored cardstock. Now these are not your regular balloons. These are very unique and they were made using the color block balloon die set. It's also a new one, part of this birthday celebrations collection. There are three size balloons in this die set and each balloon you can make it multicolor. I cut balloons from yellow, orange, and pink cardstock and put them inside a yellow box. To create a background for this card, I foiled my diagonal stripe background plate onto barely peach cardstock in opal foil. Again, for that subtle tone-on-tone -tone look. I used the new Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape in the narrow size. I had asked Spellbinders to make this particular tape in other sizes as I find this tape to be the best for taping dies and glimmer plates when creating. And so I'm happy to see this new size of tape come to life. There's also a wide a version of this tape, also very handy. The narrow size is particularly handy for this glimmer plate as this plate doesn't have a straight edge. You can see the diagonal lines going past the edges of the plate. And the regular size tape was too wide to create a hinge. This new narrow tape is perfect to make a hinge for this plate. All I do is add several hinges to make sure that things stay in place. I trimmed my foil background down just a little bit. I think I cut about one eighth of, eighth of an inch off on each side and I adhered it onto an A2 card base. Next, I added a line of glue along the middle of the box back and adhered it onto the background. Now, I didn't add glue onto the entire box back as I wanted the box to maintain the volume and come off the background a little bit more. Now, this is the kind of card that will not really go through the mail because of all of the dimension. You'll have to hand deliver it. The box does not fold flat. It's not one of those designs that pops up when you open the card or when you take the card out of the envelope. The box it is dimensional, it stays dimensional, it does not lay flat. Next, I added my colorful balloons and I tucked the balloon dog inside the box as well. As for the sentiment, I just added a simple one that reads, time to celebrate. It was foiled in matte silver foil on Spellbinder's specialty glimmer cardstock. And I embellished this card with a several pink sequins from Spellbinder's. And you can see the dimension that this box provides to the card, so it's not something you'll be able to mail. Here is another card with a box die and the balloon dog. I added tone-on-tone -to -tone foiling here as well with a big happy birthday sentiment. My next card features the other type of the balloon from the color block balloons die set paired with a stylized happy birthday and the tone-on-tone -tone foiling using an older glimmer plate from Spellbinders along with a pop of tiny flowers. I couldn't resist adding a couple of flowers here. 
And the final card for today is monochromatic. I have the tone on tone foiling in the background created with the new glimmer plate, the so many candles glimmer plate, and a stylized happy birthday sentiment along with a few die cut stars. And those are the negatives from one of the cake layers that I talked about at the beginning of this video. So there you have it, eight different birthday card ideas to celebrate Spellbinder's 20th birthday. Thanks so much for joining me today and stopping by. I love you guys and I'll see you next time.